Uh, welcome to this first session of this new kind of club. Um, it's a bit experimental. I don't know for sure how it's going to go, but we'll see. Um, just before we get started, I have the code of con conduct up on screen here. Um, you should have seen it as you came into the, the call. Just the general idea is, you know, don't be a jerk. Um, and if anyone has any problems, uh, let me know on Slack. I'm John Harmon, by the way. I run the RPDS online learning community, and I'm going to uh, facilitate this cohort of this club. Um, I don't have any slides for this club, which is a little bit different from all the other clubs that I've done for book clubs, because it's, I don't think they make sense for this, but we'll see as we go. Um, it's a weird idea, and I think it's going to be fun. But I, so I'm pulling up some of the R packages slides just to walk through kind of the general idea, although it's different. So, you know, I say here each week, volunteer will present a chapter from the book. Well, there's no book and there's no chapters, so we won't exactly be doing that. Um, but I would still like for each week people to sign up to kind of own that week. Um, I think it's going to be much more focused on discussion in this club, but we'll see how how it actually goes. Um, so what I've prepared is basically I read a couple of the sections of the um, use this package down site, which is the same as the, or it's largely the same as the documentation of the package um, and have those tabs open for us to kind of go through and discuss them. So those are my slides is just a reminder of, okay, what did I talk about or what did I prepare? Um, so I don't have a GitHub repo for this yet. I don't think we will, but again, we'll see as we go. Uh, I do plan to post these on our YouTube channel. It should have said that, it, well, it says that they're recorded as you come in. Um, if you, well, um, as long as I'm sharing things, you won't show up on screen, but if you don't, if you want to make sure you don't show up on screen, you know, go ahead, feel free to turn off your camera. That said, um, camera on is great because it makes it easier to see if you're following along. Um, you'll see me kind of look over to the side all of you are over on my monitor over here. So that's why I keep doing that. Um, and, you know, as we go, like I prepared what felt like maybe it's about the right amount of uh, stuff to read. But if we need to slow down and discuss, definitely let me know. And um, if we did too little, we'll see. This is definitely a new experiment. Um, for most of the clubs, it's usually either like one week per chapter or um, one week to talk about the chapter and another week to do exercises. And almost every book kind of works out to that pattern. This isn't a book, so I don't know how much um, we'll be able to get through, but we'll see. So I guess before we get started on like the actual content, um, if people, uh, well, I'll start, but if people would like to, you know, introduce yourselves, uh, that would be great. So we know who's who's here and what you're hoping to get, kind of get out of this. So I am hoping and have actually already experienced that by, by reading all of the documentation of this package, um, I will learn tips and tricks for things that um, I want to do. I do a lot of package development. And so use this as one of my like main packages that I, I like to use. Um, and so I just want to make sure I kind of like fully understand what's there. Um, so yeah, that's my thought and what I'm doing. Oh, and I guess about me, like I said, I run the uh, community and right now I'm actually unemployed. Uh, well, uh, I'm doing uh, some contract stuff, so, but I don't have full-time employment right now. All right, so who wants to go next? Uh, I will, I'm happy. To. All right. Um, hi, everyone. I'm Zane. I'm a PhD student in epidemiology. Um, I am really interested in this because I saw that use this has a lot of stuff that interacts with Git and GitHub. And anything that makes me have to do less clicks for getting <laughs> GitHub is welcome. I really like uh, use this for Git and GitHub. And I'm going to talk about at least part of that today, I think. So. <laughs> Anyone else want to say hi? Uh, go ahead. Can jump in. 
I'm Ethan Brockman. Um, I just started last week with a Taurus research. Um, I'm going to be developing our packages. Um, I've done a little bit of our development before uh, during my time as an actuary in health insurance, um, but I'm going to be doing a lot more of it. And I feel like I know maybe half a percent have used this and what I know is cool and I want to learn more. I did not know that it helped with Git and GitHub, so I've learned something already. Anyone else? I'm so excited. <laughs> All right. I can go. Um, okay. Hi, I'm Savannah. I'm also a, a PhD student in epidemiology. Um, and same thing, I, I've been using use this um, for uh, Git and GitHub. So I'm trying to get more familiar with it and more comfortable with it to become a little more efficient. Okay. Uh, Rebecca, Federica. Uh, Hi, uh, sure. Uh, Rebecca, okay. I'm Rebecca Butler and um, I'm a biostatistician by day. And um, I'm a very small R champion in a sea of SaaS users. And one of the things I've been trying to do is build our own internal package. So um, I have been told that use this would be very helpful. I've used some of their functions, but thought it would be great to understand them deeply. And this is my first uh, R for Data Science book club adjacent <laughs> thing. So thank you for hosting. I've always been excited to see them. And this one, I think, uh, is just right up my alley. So thank you. Okay. And okay, Olo uh said in chat that he's from Nigeria and he's a research associate at IITA. Um, and he wants to go in depth to learn more about package documentation. Um, but he can't speak right now. So that's why he's in chat. And then I guess we've got Federica. So yeah. Hi, hello. Uh, my name is Federica Gazzelloni. I'm from Italy. I'm an actuary and uh, a statistician. So I enjoy doing, doing these book clubs and I'm just uh, <laughs> uh, having a look at this one as well as uh, um, I'm very interested in developing my package, which I already started and uh, really curious about uh, expanding on documentations. So yeah, we'll see um, if I can attend it, hopefully. <laughs> uh, so thank you very much. Okay. All right. So I've set up um, something kind of to pass as structure. Uh, we have a spreadsheet that's linked in the channel that I'm showing right now. Um, it's just got dates. Uh, you can sign up to present and then what roughly what you think you'll cover. Um, I'll show as I'm going into it, I'll show what I mean by these configuration and Git and GitHub sections. Um, I've got a number here just kind of for myself to help keep track of like how many meetings we've had. But obviously, again, there are no chapters. There isn't really an order. Like we could have gone through alphabetically, but that seemed weird. Um, I wanted to go through and kind of hit things that go together. Um, so this is the main tab. I also have kind of pulled out some information to try to hopefully help us keep track of what we've done and what's left to do. Um, so I'll jump over, I, I went through, there's the package down site, uh, which I'll show you in a second. Basically it's a website that is the same as the documentation of the package plus some extras. Um, we'll talk a little bit about uh, how those package or those websites get created because there are there is at least one use this function related to creating package down sites. Um, so that one will be interesting that we'll be reading about how to do it on the page where you do it or on the page that is a demonstration of it rather. Um, so anyway, I've, I've gone through and I've pulled through all these groups that I should show this. Um, on the package down site, the documentation is all put into these groups. So we've got create, active project, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So I did configuration and get in GitHub. We'll, we'll see if we actually go through or how much of that we actually go through. But I pull all that out to see what group everything's in. So you can kind of see um, as your 
going to present. The idea is you can like take whichever ones you actually present and throw them over here onto this functions covered tab. Um, the meeting number doesn't really matter, but I did that to keep track of it for myself. Uh, and so these are the ones that I think I'll cover. I'll delete ones we don't cover if we don't actually cover any of those. And then this tab here is auto populating from everything that there is to cover, everything that's been covered, what's left. Yeah, we shouldn't need to look at this, but then by the end of the whole thing, if we come back here and there's some things left over that no one ever got to or whatever, we'll do those at the end. Um, I don't know, like, I don't know. I don't know how this is gonna work. We'll see how it goes. I think if we kind of stick to the blocks, we'll be okay. Some things are covered in more than one of those sections. And so when I went through and prepared Git and GitHub, a lot of the stuff in this Git and GitHub section is either um, package, like somewhere in the package stuff. Um, some of it's in the tidyverse development section, which we might, uh, I don't know, we'll, we'll talk about that when we get to it. And so I skipped a lot of these pieces because I don't think it makes sense for us to dig into all of those parts yet. They, they're more related to package release, for example. And so I left those things. Um, but again, we'll see what we talk about. Um, so did that at least kind of make sense? Anyone have any questions about that? Um, I see that uh, Sham Sadin joined. So good to see you, Sham. Um, if you can and want to introduce yourself, feel free to hop off of mute. But if you aren't able to unmute right now, that's also fine. Give me a sec. All right. So with that. I'm gonna start with configuration because it made sense for us to start there because it's like um, getting your machine ready to work with things. It's the stuff that you should do first. Some of it is setting up, use this. Um, and let's see, did I, where did I put that? There is, yes. There is also a um, vignette that we'll come back to uh, that kind of combines these things. So I guess first navigation. All right, we've got, this is the, uh, if you just come to uh, use this.rlib.org, you can get here by clicking the little <laughs> um, web uh, button. If you go to our studio, the packages tab and find use this, there's a, a like a globe with lines on it. If you click that globe, it should launch your browser with this website, but also it's just, you know, it's just one uh, URL. Um, this is the package down site for use this. It starts like page one is basically the readme about how to, uh, or whatever it's, whatever they have set up that's kind of general usage of use this. Right now, I don't plan to go over this, but maybe we will decide that we want to. Um, and then there's this reference tab and the articles uh, section. So the reference tab is what I'm showing here, where it's all of the help pages compiled into groups, or almost all of the help pages. We'll talk about that uh, in a little bit. Um, and then there's also this articles tab. This is effectively the vignettes from the package. So if you go to the package help, it'll say like vignettes and um, what is the wording? Uh, Oops, I went to the wrong window. You can't see what I'm doing, but I'm looking at the use this help. And oh, I actually um, installed the dev version. And so I don't have the vignettes built. But anyway, there, there are vignettes. Um, these tend to be like groups of um, but like how to do a thing that will use more than one function or you know, like more than one help, uh, function to do. And so it's kind of groups of help documentation. We're going to go over one of these, or at one or two of these at the end. So they use this setup and then the GitHub setup. Um, but I, I think the order I want to go is go into the individual helps and then we'll kind of look at how they go together. All right. So without further ado, uh, so I'm looking here at this configuration section. It's not that many. Uh, help things, uh, these sections or these sets that are shown like this, that means that they're all combined into one help file. And so really the configuration section is only three help files. 
Um, all right. So uh, this one is funny because uh, we started the um, what they forgot to teach you about our book club um, yesterday or the day before. I can't remember now. It's all running together. And this is one of the things we talked about in that club is there is this concept of a blank slate that um, you want to make sure that your R session is like clean, that it doesn't have objects in it that you haven't explicitly loaded or created. Um, but by default in uh, both, I think it's an R default, but it's also the default in our studio that it will save your uh, whatever objects you had in memory. So when you close our studio um, and then open it again, those objects come back. That's uh, dangerous, basically. Um, and Jenny, uh, Brian advises against it because you might not realize that you have something there. And then you try to hand your work off to someone else to do or to, to use, like hand off a script and they don't have that object. You don't ever do anything to create it. Um, and so it's best to turn those options off. And this use blank slate function, um, you can do it for a user, which is like for, for everything, or you can do it for one specific project. I recommend just leaving it at user and it'll turn off those settings. Now you can also just open, I can show you because we have, um, <laughs> we did it in uh, this other book club yesterday. Um, that there is this setting. So you can go to our studio. It's in general basic. It's these settings right here. Uncheck that box and set this to never. That's what this function does. So it's just setting those up. Um, does that make sense? Is everyone kind of following that? Any? I have comments, a question questions? about this. Sure. Um, also, I have a question about how many questions are OK. But um, <laughs> as, I, I want to discuss. So as many questions as you want to ask are definitely OK. <laughs> okay, so I have set this via the IDE for ages, so I don't remember what it was like before that, but I was confused the other, yeah, so I have this checked in yeah. my IDE, but like my um, local environment still save the environment variables um, that have been created, like in the top right pane of my RStudio, those are still loaded even when I exit out of the IDE and then reopen it. So I guess I don't remember, because to me that feels like saving something that is then existing on startup. What what so, else is our data saving that I don't remember that causes problems? Uh, it should just be those objects. They shouldn't reload um, unless either through your R profile, which we'll talk about in a minute, if you're reloading them there, or like this box should be unchecked. Okay, sure. so I guess okay. I, I think for my session, I mean, like if I close a project and reopen it, it's definitely nothing is there. But okay, when I like close the IDE and reopen it, things are still there. Does that make sense? It does, but I mean, is that of. does that sound problematic <laughs> to you? Does that sound like not the definition of our data? Our data means like everything in your, all the things the, you, all the objects you created should be gone every time you open it, every single time. Yes. Uh, so okay. in the environment tab specifically is what you mean, right? Yeah, that, yeah, that yeah. should be empty. That's the goal of a clean workspace. Okay. Exactly. So yeah, okay. that, that should be it, the, um, we'll come back to that in a minute because okay. there's one, something that could be in, impacting that. Um, all right. Anyone else have any thoughts? All right. Um, do I have it? Let's see. Um, okay. So yeah, this is, the dot R profile. So the next section um, is about this R profile file. This file, um, you technically can have one per, I think you can have, actually, I don't think you can have a separate R profile per project, but you can do one per um, per user. Not 100% sure about that, but you normally- can have a separate one per project. You can or can yeah, I? Yeah, you can. Um, okay. But if you want your user level one to also mm -hmm. load, you have to source it at the beginning of the project level one. Okay. Yeah, I hadn't, I, I don't do that. So I didn't, I wasn't <laughs> sure. I've done uh, our environment per project because that has specific uses. But anyway, so this R profile, um, 
this file is a file that gets sourced by R when R loads. Um, it is useful, but dangerous for the same reason as the blank slate that you could have, if you're not careful about what you put in here, your version of R could behave differently than other people's versions of R. Um, and so it can make things a little weird. I just recently started using this use dev tools that um, is in here. And so what these functions do is they give you things that you can, they copy things onto your clipboard and open up your R profile and say, add this in if you want to. Um, specifically use dev tools and use use this uh, automatically like library dev tools or library use this when you start R. The idea of that being that then all of these use this things are just available without you having to library or without you having to specify the namespace. Um, same with use reprex or reprex and use conflicted that makes those packages available when you load. And then, um, so, so I'll stop on those ones. So these ones make packages, basically just our auto library, some packages there. Um, it's still dangerous because if you hand off your script and you call dev tools or use this or reprex or conflicted functions in your script. Um, other people wouldn't necessarily have them libraried. Part of the idea is that these packages are packages that you use. They're not necessarily packages that your script uses. Now, conflicted, actually, the more I think about it, I think I'm going to turn that one off because conflicted can change the behavior of the script. The other three are like um, tools that you use to develop scripts rather than tools that you tend to use inside of scripts. So that's why they're kind of okay to have libraried all the time. Um, anyway, so any thoughts on first those, the package, the library ones, the first four. All right, so before, so the, the last one though, use partial warnings. Uh, and so I should, um, let's see, can I share my screen? It's, uh, <laughs> I'm going to make sure that I don't have anything in here that uh, I can't show. Okay. Um, and I will go ahead and stop sharing and then just share. Um, that screen and that's going to be a weird for a minute. But okay. Um, so this is just an R Studio session. This is my R profile. And um, I'm actually going to get rid of conflicted because I'm kind of conflicted about <laughs> using conflicted. But these suppress messages things are what get created with the um, use dev tools and use reprex. Now I realized, so I had also the line that she or uh, that gets generated for use this in here but actually if we look at dev tools go to the help for dev tools uh dev tools has depends use this which means when you library dev tools you also library use this automatically um so this is taking care of that um the it's interesting, like how the function works is as this if interactive. So if you're just running an R script, uh, like in a, its own session, these won't library. Uh, but if you if you're running it interactively, it'll library. Um, so that's the the package startup version, and then this is what that use partial warnings thing does: is it sets these options. Um, there's warn partial match args, warn partial match dollar, and warn partial match uh, attribute, ATTR, that by default, R has these all set to false. And what that means is if you have a you know data frame, um, like empty cars, uh, M, if you have them turned off, you don't get this warning message. 
it just will say, oh, M is close enough to MPG and it just like works. The problem with that is um, like you can hit the wrong thing. You can think, you know, let's say I was actually aiming for miles per hour and I was like, yeah, I'm close enough M or whatever. I mean, I mean, for meters for some reason, and there's this MPG column and it'll just grab it and not tell you that it grabbed this other column that has nothing to do with what you were actually trying to grab. Um, the same for arguments and functions. So um, we can be like really meta and say like use um, dev tools, actually just use dev, use dev tools doesn't have any arguments, but um, uh, just trying to think of, you know, like uh, data frame has the argument uh, row dot names and by default, you can just say row equals whatever and give it an, a thing. And R, R will say, oh, that's close enough to row names. You must have meant that. Um, that's kind of a nice feature of R for interactive use, but it's really dangerous. Like it lets you accidentally screw up. And so these arguments are to at least give us a warning that, hey, you did this thing and it's pro it might not be what you meant to do. Um, so I'm I'm all for those. We're also going to see uh, some stuff about this, and I don't remember if I go over it or if we're going to talk about it in a future one. And then my R profile also has this thing that, um, if you can see down in my prompt, it tells me what um, branch I'm on for uh, the GitHub repo of whatever I'm working on, and then it also gives a timestamp of whenever it loaded. So. Um, if I do like another command, it'll update that, um, which is kind of useful that if I'm running something and it takes a long time and I don't want to rerun it to time it, but I can just kind of look back at, okay, what was the previous timestamp and the current timestamp? Um, and Federica is asking if I can zoom in and I can, so there we go. Um, so yeah, I, um, Let's see. So uh, I don't want, I, I can share this prompt thing. I've got some like notes to myself in there. The general idea is there's this prompt package and uh, you, you set up um, this set prompt rule and it'll do things like um, construct little pieces. So I've got the get branch piece and I've got the time uh, in there. Um, all right, so... Does that all make sense? We're all on, on board. Anyone have any um, questions, comments, concerns there? I want to switch that back. Okay. Um, so the next piece, let's see, is that yes, that there are, is this whole set of uh, functions for opening various configuration files. So we just saw the edit our profile that's what I used to open my R profile. Um, there's also edit R environ. That one is, um, uh, yes, I did update this, that it is shareable. So you can, oops, no, there. Uh, R environ is setting, it, it's a way to set environment variables. Um, it's mostly useful for or, or not mostly, but a way that it's uh, often used is to set like uh, database settings or um, uh, keys for APIs, things like that. You can put the, those into your R environment and then R like knows those things, but you don't ever have to type them in, uh, which can, you know, lead them to accidentally being shared and that can be bad. Uh, I've been using our package specific or uh, project specific our environments for um, deploying things. Like I've got some shiny apps that need to know some secrets. And so I put those secrets into the R environment for that project and it gets loaded or uploaded to shinyapps.io. And then the, the shiny app knows those things uh, for when it runs. These are, uh, so actually uh, in, File download, 
uh, or what is it? It's, uh, is it just download file? Yeah, download file. Um, when you are downloading a file uh, from the internet through R, by default, it's in here somewhere that there is a really stupidly short, yeah, um, it defaults to 60 seconds, that it only has 60 seconds to download the file or it'll time out and throw an error. And I do a fair amount of like um, large language corpus downloads or uh, model parameters or different things like that. And uh, I was for a while automatic or, or manually every time I'm trying to download something like giving it a little bit more time. And I decide I don't care. Like I, a thousand seconds is fine for anything to download. So I have that set um, in my R environment. Um, so that's those two. There's also edit our make bars. I uh, don't currently have anything in my make bars. Um, I know that there, so that is um, when something is being, is compiling, um, like when you're compiling, uh, building an R package from source. These are rules that it uses during those, uh, that compilation. I, I don't have anything in there, but I know there are things to put in there. I don't, think yeah she doesn't go into any examples um our studio snippets has this warning I, I didn't i've never used this function again I, that's something that i would probably just do through the ui but the reason that it's nice is you can uh if you work this out in a function you can send that function to someone else and it'll create whatever those rules that you are or that you set up so this would be something that might be useful to um kind of work out how you would call um, this, uh, whatever. Um, so our studio snippets are things that uh, like you can quick type basically. And so uh, you can set up your own snippets and then, um, and, or you can edit those. I guess that just calls the editor. Um, yeah, it creates or it, call, it opens up files for you to edit, that's right. Um, you can also edit our studio prefs and that that just loads uh, it loads a file that I didn't know existed, which is a JSON of all your R studio preferences. Um, again, that's stuff that you can just set through the UI, but maybe you want to be able to like send something to someone to copy paste uh, into their R studio preferences. Uh, we will talk a little bit more about edit get config in a minute. So that one I have used and do advise using for something. Um, edit get ignore, I've never used directly as a command, but there are commands in use this that automatically ignore some things. We'll talk about that in a minute. And this edit package down config. Um, I don't think I have, yeah, no, there's no package down for this project, but um, I go to uh cookies oops go to do, 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 cookies so this is a package that i wrote that does have a package down site and um let's get that copied all right and there's nothing exciting there but uh that opens up this file that i could do more in um, I was curious, I did already have that file. Um, that automatically gets created by uh, use this in a different setting. So we'll talk about where that comes from um, when we do the package setup week. We're not gonna talk about those today. Um, out of all of these, these are the only two I had ever directly, well, no, those two and edit get config I had used. It's nice to know these other ones exist. Uh, I could imagine sharing the prefs file with someone, although it does have some file path stuff in there that they would have to change, but you could use that to um, kind of help someone through some problems. Um, yeah, any other thoughts on those ones? Uh, welcome to the call, Jackie. 
All right, so that's that's all of that section. That is the configuration section. Most of it is this use blank slate. It's these R profile things. And then it's the concept of, hey, you have an R profile in an R environment that you can open up for editing. Um, the path to, I, I can never remember the path to R profile in R environment. It's like the root of your user directory and they're dot files, so they're hidden most of the time. So those functions are really useful because you don't have to go searching for them. Of, Wait, where are these things? Um, but yeah, all right. Uh, so that's that section. I did want to briefly look at that there is this vignette. Um, actually, it's a, so it's an article. It only appears on the website that is how to set up use this. And it goes through a whole bunch of things um, to get everything uh, about how to get everything to work together, um, tells you the pieces that you probably want to do and like gives you some warnings about them. And this is where, um, I, I, let's do, oops, let's, um, in edit our profile, oops, um, there are these options that I have that are use this options um, that she talks about in this article of, you know, you can tell it uh, what your name is. Um, you can set up uh, what you want to show up in the license or in the description authors at, at R, um, which we'll talk about when we talk about package building stuff and what, what type of license you want to use by default, all that kind of stuff. I like the use this desk dir setting because otherwise use this will just dump things onto your desktop on um, Windows at least. I can't remember what it does in Linux or, and I don't know Mac, but um, so that setting is good to just tell it where to default to when you create a package, um, when you're downloading something from GitHub. Um, and I haven't taken, so I just found out that this commit or this option exists through this article that you can tell it, okay, just overwrite things without asking for my permission whenever you're using a use this function. And in theory, that like her, she says, the rationale is that if you're using Git, Git tells you that the file was overwritten. And if you don't want it overwritten, you can just roll it back. And so, okay, that's a rational argument, but I haven't um, convinced myself that it's okay to turn that one to true yet because it is giving use this a little bit more power than it has already. Um, so yeah, that was something that I learned by reading this, you know, reading this cover to cover. Oh, I guess the other thing that I got from reading this cover to cover is uh, if you install use this from uh, GitHub right now, the documentation is slightly different than the version that's on the site because uh, actually I think the site has probably been updated now. Um, as I went through, I found some typos and things. And so I submitted a pull request and she merged it a uh, half hour ago or so. And so, um, the use this documentation got updated through the process of us reading the documentation. Um, so yeah, that's uh, that's that. The other big one that um, we're going to talk about in a whole other uh, context, but the git sit rep that is like that is a really great function, and we'll talk about why it's so great um, in a minute. I need to stop sharing for a second to see. Uh, I want to make sure that we can talk about that function when it comes up. I don't think it shows anything that it shouldn't show. Uh, like, for example, the token. No. Okay. <laughs> I didn't, I wanted to make sure I wasn't showing anything uh, that we shouldn't show. So, but we'll talk about this in a moment. Okay. Um, so, yeah, the, sec other, the second section of this is all about getting started with um, GitHub. And there's a whole, there are other articles about that. So we'll talk about that. Um, so we'll skip all that part. And then there's uh, a little bit about making sure that you're able to build packages. Um, this DevTools has devel function, um, just tells you if you are set up basically. So if you run that, the system is ready to build packages. Okay. Um, if you're not, this article has a little bit about how to get set up to build packages. And it's 
definitely advisable to do that, like run through until this function um, tells you yes, basically. So follow the instructions here. You might have to work through some errors. I think, um, I can't remember if has Bell, look, I, I was set up when I ran it, but I think it might give you some advice. Um, and she mentions this package build check build tools, but I think, because if we look at it, it's exactly the same thing. So I su suspect um, that that's what has devolved is actually calling. I do wanna point out that um, I'm probably gonna do this through the course of this. So if you are in a function and you, in our studio and you hit F1, loads the help for that function. And if you hit F2, oh, uh, Normally it'll load the function, but it, if we look at the help, it actually um, shows us that it's re-exported from package build. So package build um, as devel is what it's actually calling. And let's see, yeah, that'll load the actual definition of the function when you hit F2. Um, and that is useful because we can see, okay, what would it have done uh, if I didn't, if it didn't send me this, what else was the option? And so this is telling me, hey, use this check build tools, which is the other function that she told us about. Um, it will walk you through and tell you what's wrong. So that's the one that I would recommend just call package build check build tools. Um, and that'll, that'll walk you through to make sure you're ready to go on your system to run anything. Uh, so yeah, all right. So now um, I'm gonna close some things out so I don't get lost. Yeah, and now I'm gonna go through parts of the Git and GitHub. Let's see, it's quarter to 12. We are not gonna get through everything, but I'm gonna get through the basics that aren't covered in other sections. Um, so Git and GitHub, The I, I actually changed the order despite how it shows up in here because the first thing you want is this git sit rep function. And that um, is what I ran before, but I'll do it again here. Um, when you call this, it's going to tell you, okay, here's what I know about you globally. Here's uh, what I can see about your, your GitHub setup. Um, and and um, for this, or this project, how is it set up? Where, what is the active project? Is it on GitHub? What do I know about everything with that? This function is what I recommend everyone use when you're trying to set up your system to use GitHub with use this because um, it will iteratively tell you, oh, I can't find a personal access token. You should set that by calling this function. Um, you are not vaccinated. You should call get vaccinate, which we'll talk about in a second. And so it's it's just, it's really nice that it's just, it's, um, Sit rep stands for situation report. It's like, how how is your Git doing? Um, I'm curious. No, nope. okay, this hasn't, uh, the, the website uh, hasn't rebuilt yet because uh, I actually deleted this line because it has nothing to do with this, uh, this function. And so, um, I mean, other than it'll get called or get talked about in a minute. Um, actually before that though, in the, uh, see if I have the setup handy. Um, the only thing you want to run before, or a thing that you should run right away, and actually that git sit rep doesn't tell you is missing, is this use git config that I told you we would come back to. Um, you want to set your username and user email. Git sit rep currently doesn't tell you to do that. Um, and that was something that I ran into as a, a problem when I, uh, I purposefully like wiped my system, took R and R Studio and GitHub off of my system, and then tried to restart from scratch to see to remember how it works, basically. And uh, that I missed that line, and it made everything else kind of break. So don't skip this step. So after you like, uh, they have help on installing Git, setting up a GitHub account, all of that. Do all of that, and then tell. Uh, what you're really doing is telling Git, like this calls, um, we should have a help for this, but whatever. Um, it's actually calling these underlying functions, which actually are, uh, it doesn't show that here, but they're, 
it's calling command line git functions to set this for git universally, not just for R, not just for our studio. You're telling git that my name is, you know, John Harmon and my email is johnthegeek at gmail.com. Um, so that command, super useful. I, I'm sure I have it open in another tab to talk about that, but you do that. And then you can use git sit rep and it'll walk you through all the rest of the steps. Uh, I think I opened an issue. If not, I have it like on a tab to open of, you know, git sit rep should tell you that because if that's not set, that breaks everything else downstream from it. All right. So um, if you aren't set up to use git with, uh, use this, this is the, you know, those two functions are basically all you need. And it'll walk you through everything else. And the next thing that it will tell you is that you should run this git vaccinate. It Git vaccinate just adds these files to your git ignore. That's all it actually does. But it also does some cleanup to um, fix situations where you have the file, but it's not being used by git or things like that. The reason you want those is these are all things that will um, that can hide can have uh, personal data in them, like passwords and stuff. And so you never want to upload those to Git or to GitHub. Um, and so this Git vaccinate just makes sure that all of these files are hidden from Git and they'll never get uploaded to GitHub. Um, our history, especially, it shows like everything you have done in R. And so if you upload that into a repository, you might accidentally reveal how you connected it to some database or um, you know a password you typed into something or whatever. Uh, so this is one that just you know run it and, and it's nice because if it's already set, it's just not going to do anything. Like it, it doesn't delete anything. It checks if you have these things and adds them if you don't. Um, so yeah, that one is super highly recommended. I actually didn't know that it also uh, does some fixing. I just knew that it um, did this get ignored thing, but that's nice to know about it. And then, oops. Um, oh, it, this is from the, um, oh, no, this is a section. So this is the create GitHub token and GH token help section of the help. This is uh, the next one that if you, uh, if you're calling git sit rep, it'll say, hey, I can't find a personal access token. You should use create GitHub token. Um, this function automatically sets the scopes that you need for 99% of the things that you're gonna wanna do with GitHub. And so it's just usually, I almost always have used just the defaults here. Uh, I do recommend when you call it, actually set a description, which is, how do you intend to use this token? So a GitHub token is like a, uh, it's a uh, quick way to let something log in as you for GitHub. Um, this help talks about how all like use this interacts with two packages, but both of them can use this token. So if you set things up with a GitHub token, uh, all the GitHub stuff you need to do can be handled. So you set, you create this token, you say, you know, this is my token for our studio on, you know, uh, personal PC or whatever it would be what you use for description. Um, leave the host as null, and it will open up a web page on Git where you set up the personal access token. And uh, the idea of personal access tokens is you tell it things like it's for our studio on, on my personal PC, or I had you know our studio uh, for work PC on my tokens, and when I left my job a few weeks ago, deleted that token, and so now I didn't have to worry of oh where did I share that? Where had I saved it on the PC? Is it wiped properly? The token's dead now, so it doesn't matter. So no one can log in as me uh, from that machine, or from any machine uh, that was using that token. Um, Something to know while you're going through these, like I, I was helping someone through this before. And like when you do this, it opens up the web page and you hit okay. And then it will show you the token and say, you know, copy this right now. Um, you'll never be able to see this again, which sounds a little scary, but whatever. What it is is 
you know, if you copy that, you can use it in the next step. Um, if you don't, whatever, delete that token and do it again. Like tokens are easy or are, 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 you know, they're fine to create a thousand of, well, I actually don't know if there's a limit on GitHub, but you can create them, delete them, doesn't matter. Um, let's see, that's, I think everything there. And then um, it says, see also this get creds, get creds set. When you do uh, the create GitHub token, it will tell you, okay, now call this function and you paste that token into get cred set into the password field that get cred set loads up. And then that stores on your system that this is the token that is allowed for this situation. Um, and then it's set and then your, your GitHub just kind of works basically at that point. Um, and yeah, GH token help. I can't remember exactly what that shows, uh, but I think it, yeah, it's, it's a piece of this. So you don't really need that individual function because just keep calling get sit rep and you get all the pieces. But if you are just trying to debug what's going on with the uh, with your token, that's what that function does. Um, all right, so that's those ones. You know, try to do, oh, this is where I had the use get config. Um, just to kind of quickly run through, there's the use get ignore. I have never used this function directly, but it gets called when you are setting up, like when you do the get vaccinate, it's using this function to set up your ignores. Um, you can also use it to set up, if you have a bunch of files in a project that you wanna ignore, you could use this to automatically add all of them. Um, like if you had a, a vector of the file names. Um, there's this function for setting the protocol. All throughout this, she talks about how by default use this, uses HTTPS as the protocol. There are situations where you might want to use SSH, but um, I, like don't unless you really have to. <laughs> if you use HTTPS, everything just works. And so um, the asterisk on that is I think in Linux uh, or other, um, basically in Linux, uh, you usually want to use SSH, but hopefully if you're using Linux, you can kind of read the instructions and make it work. Um, so I never, uh, never change this anymore. It's funny because it used, used this used to recommend SSH and I had a lot of stuff that was set up a long time ago and it was set up to use SSH and it actually makes your life harder. And I didn't realize that's why my life was hard. And so uh, resetting everything actually helped clean that all up. So I, I'm still going through now. Um, I guess, you know, backing up a little bit, I don't know if all of you have used Git and or GitHub, but the idea of Git is it's a system for tracking changes to uh, projects. So to files in a project and then GitHub and GitLab and um, uh, there are a couple other ones are uh, websites to host your GitHub or your Git repositories. Um, by, by using GitHub, all of, you know, everything you've done, as long as you've checked it in is stored. And so when I um, have been going through and I've been finding some projects that uh, clearly were set up with SSH before, and now they behave a little strange, I just delete them and recreate them from GitHub because they're on GitHub, it doesn't matter. I don't care about my local version of the project. Um, and so that's like the advantage of, or an advantage of working with Git is specifically with working with GitHub is everything's saved. Um, and so I don't have to feel scared about deleting the local one. Now, asterisk, if you've got like in progress work in the project that you haven't checked in, um, that matters, but uh, uh, yeah, anyway, so that's, that's Git, that's Git protocol. And then we're going to go ahead and stop there. Um, I will note which ones we didn't talk about, and we can talk about those next time. And I will bug people in the channel unless someone wants to step, step up right now to see who is going to go next. Um, I will definitely start a conversation in the channel since we're running out of time here, but to know, you know, 
if anyone has any thoughts about the process, the order, the, you know, how to go through things, like I said, this is a new thing. So suggestions are very welcome. Or if you're watching this on YouTube, come into the Slack, uh, rpds.io slash join, and let's talk about it. All right. I will see everyone uh, next week, if not before. Bye. Thank, Thank you. you.